In this tutorial, I'll be demonstrating how action bars in tracks can be rearranged and manipulated. For an explanation of tracks and action bars, please see the direct overview tutorial. Once tracks and action bars have been recorded in the timeline, adjustments and fine-tuning can easily be performed. This includes alterations you will often find yourself wanting to make, such as changing the chronological order of events. For example, making a character's leap back in surprise happen ever so slightly later in the timeline, or you could alter the length of time it takes for an action to occur. Basic functions can also be carried out by accessing a right-click contextual menu on each action bar, and I'll briefly describe the features. Edit Curve enables adjustments to be made to the velocity of characters, props and cameras over time, and is discussed in the Timeline Curves tutorial. Invoking it from here is the same as clicking on the Edit Curve button. Set Comment allows a more descriptive caption to be added to the action bar instead of the generic information, i.e. Jane Goto. For example, here I could enter something like this. Cut and Copy allow the cutting and copying of selected action bars within a track, which can then be pasted at a new point in the timeline. This will be useful, for example, where you may want to repeat a background sound a number of times. Action bars can be pasted into a different but matching track, i.e. a character's action bar can be copied and pasted into another character's action bar, but not that of a camera track. Delete removes the selected action bar. Reset Take removes all tracks from the take. Export to Action allows the user to output the take as a script. This script will then appear in the Actions folder in the set list. The script contains the take actions as commands, as used by the underlying engine of Antics Direction. This will be useful to advanced users, i.e. it can be edited for fine-tuning of timings. Create Video renders the takeout in the format specified under Output Preferences, and this can be either AVI, .mov, or an image sequence. Save Image creates a still image of the set view. Shotline Active means the set view will play back using the camera cuts defined in the shotline, discussed in the shotline tutorial. When this is unchecked, it's then possible to manually choose which camera to use to provide the set view, i.e. the master camera. This is useful to avoid unnecessarily moving cameras once the shot line has been set up. The move options, ripple off and ripple on, determine how adjacent action bars are repositioned when one is moved. With ripple on, one action bar can effectively shunt the ones next to it when moved. For example, when the move option is set to ripple off, the action bars are effectively locked in position. In Jane's current track, her first action is to get up out of the outdoor chair, as her conversation with John begins. But I've now decided it would be more dramatic if she did it after their talk had begun. To begin with, I'll filter out the bus track. And now I'll set the scrub line to 3 seconds. I could do this by dragging it, but to be more accurate, I'll key in the value. Then press return, and the scrub line is now set at 3 seconds. This gives me a reference, and I'll now use the Move Rescale tool to click and drag Jane's action bar like this. So now when I play back, she'll immediately begin speaking, but won't get up until 3 seconds into the take. I've just moved an action bar in Jane's primary track, but this has not affected a secondary track, which is the Talk Series layered animation, and this can be seen when I unfold the track like this. By the same token, however, I could just as easily edit this track in the same way that I did the primary track. I can also edit the duration of action bars, that is, the amount of time it takes an action to occur in a primary or secondary track. In this action bar, it takes Jack approximately 2 seconds to hit his mark where he begins to fall over. I now want to record the magic water charm that Jessica is going to hurl at him travelling along this path. Animate is active, and I'll set the scrub line to 1272 by keying it in. Now I'll select the sphere primitive, and choose the snap to object tool. Clicking on the path now will make the sphere primitive follow it to its end. This has now been recorded as a timeline track. However, by default, the sphere takes approximately 10 seconds to reach the end of the path. And obviously, this is way too slow to land on Jack. 
It can be easily rectified, however, by editing the length of the action bar using the Move Rescale tool. I know that Jack will be in the appropriate position at 1386, so I'll set this in the current time field. Making sure the action bar is not selected, I can now simply drag the end marker to the position here. This means the sphere will now travel more rapidly along its path and land on Jack as he begins to fall. I'll rewind the scrub line and now press play.